I, th I wouldn't call this a flaw. I think it's almost a, a, a necessity of, uh, you know, for survival for companies, uh, which is that uh, if you have a good idea in, in a company, you know, whether it's large or it's small, you want that good idea to be better, and you want that idea to have impact, and then more impact, and then even more impact. And that's largely because the people who provide capital to the companies or other people who are interested in the company, uh, they like growth. And growth comes from taking an idea that is somewhat contained and then having that diffuse into you know, broader and broader parts of the market or into adjacent markets and so on and so forth. And companies sort of pursue this in a variety of different ways. You know, they, they find a, a, you know, one great way in which you can, uh, you can serve coffee to people. And a coffee could be, you know, I pour the milk, and I, you know, I give you, you know, a, a, some funky combination of, you know, soy milk with some, you know, a few other things, and and it's done in in a certain way that you know people love to sort of come back for more. So I take that formula, I, I sort of capture that, and I reproduce it in the in the next uh, coffee shop. I reproduce it in the next coffee shop, and so on and so forth. So I have a formula uh, that I that uh, multiplies the idea. Or if I'm a technology company, I have a platform, you know, uh, or template. Uh, using which I take that same idea or the same product and I sort of stamp it out in multiple places. So I, I think fundamentally companies are built on the backs of formulae and platforms. And even if they don't do it themselves, if they try and go out and acquire companies, for instance, look at a company like Cisco, it builds, or Johnson Johnson, builds itself by acquiring other companies. Well, they too have a formula for a acquisition. So, um, so I think that is... Again, I, I hate to call it a flaw because I think it's it's almost like you know, do, do we have flaws in the fact that we we like to eat good food? But it's 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 you know it's almost a, a necessity, and uh, uh, and yes, it's a flaw because you know we become flabby at the end of it. Uh, but that's that that that's just uh, you know that's just the way it is, and I think that simultaneously is also the challenge for the company. Just like you eat a lot of good food, you become flabby, your arteries harden, and then you die uh, if you don't do something about it. Similarly, companies, as they, you know, eat a lot of good food and they, you know, use the platform and the formula to, uh, to grow, uh, uh, that, that sort of sows the seeds of its own destruction in some way. And I uh, use the coffee example not just as a random example, it's something that, you know, uppermost in my mind as I think about a great story of a highly innovative company. Uh, we all know the company we're talking about. Uh, uh, and uh, it, it grew beyond a point of sort of, you know, replicating the same idea in, in, in many different places. And eventually, uh, it, it reached a point where, you know, it's just, just you know, there, were, there, were no, there was no edge left to it anymore. It was such a familiar commodity in every airport and every street corner uh, that, you know, it just wasn't an interesting place to go in anymore. And that's, it started seeing its growth flatten out. And uh, I think that's almost a, a, an image that many of us, you know, can relate to because we, you know, go to Starbucks. You know, several of us, you know, go to a Starbucks in the morning and you know, sort of start our day there. And, and over the last few years, I've kind of seen, you know, a, the a neighborhood Starbucks just becoming a far less interesting place to go to. And I think that's that's symptomatic of the challenges that big companies face, and even you know, medium-sized companies face. The remedy, as when as with all remedies, it's. Uh, uh, you know, you, you, you can't, it's kind of like, you know, uh, to stay with my uh, eating good food example, you know, there's one remedy, which is you take 10 milligrams of Lipitor and get your, you know, your, uh, your bad cholesterol count down. So that could be, you know, you stick a pill, you know, one radical remedy and does the job. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think we found the Lipitor for, you know, Starbucks or companies that, you know, face the same kinds of challenges. You kind of have to take more of a systemic approach and to some extent an almost a, uh, 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 an evolving approach and something that you have to l experiment with a few different things, try a few different things, and often you know make some radical changes in culture and so on. So in addition to taking your Lipitor, you have to go for a daily run, and you have to you know eat eat you know uh, buy a food from Whole Foods or whatever. Right? Mm -hmm. So I, I think the uh, uh, the remedy that I would start with is to recognize that the platform or the formula is inherently incredibly important. We have to eat as a company. So you, 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 you can't do away with that. You can't blow that thing up. However, what you can do is you can take certain, you know, certain, you know, sort of ring fence, certain parts of, uh, of the organization and just blow up the platform, just burn it down. And, uh, and then give the employees who run that, uh, you know, or, or who populate that part of the organization, you give them the liberty to be entrepreneurial. 
and uh, and and while you 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 give them sort of a ledge to to stand on the ledge could be uh, your brand uh, your the, your supply chain uh, the prices that you've negotiated with your suppliers all of that kind of good stuff but after that uh, all Starbucks locations in uh, Brookline Massachusetts which is where I live the manager of you know the store around the corner from my house he or she runs it like it was a neighborhood coffee shop it is not something that has the colors of Starbucks. It has pictures of, you know, kids who kind of grown up in the neighborhood. It has, you know, uh, family memorabilia from the people who work there. It's got music that the people in the store like, as opposed to, you know, the Starbucks uh, appro Starbucks approved Bob Dylan, you know, uh, uh, retrospective. Just, just, just blow up the fundamentals of the Starbucks formula, and uh, and and and, and uh, you know, create this entrepreneurial venture. In, in a microcosm of the organization. And I think you can do that in practically every company you can think of. And if we have several such experiments, you know, not enough to completely sort of burn down uh, the macro platform, but enough to sort of have these contained forest fires, you will uh, you'll find you know, there'll be new plants and new vegetation that will regenerate. The, the, the leaves there will be much brighter and greener than the leaves that were there before. And some of them, it just won't work. You know, you, the regeneration will create a disaster, will confuse customers, people will get turned off, or you just don't have enough creativity at the end, entrepreneurship at the end, which is fine. You learn from some of those experiments. That's, that's what my radical remedy would be. You know, keep the fundamental uh, you know, platform, but take certain portions and just you know, blow it up and create these uh, you know, islands of entrepreneurship that, uh, that are supported uh, by the online company.